Let's go. Next We're Gen live. Fam, what's going on? We are stoked to be back live with Next Gen HQ. Thank you so much for everybody who's tuning in. I know you are so fired up to uh, to have a great show today. How's your Thursday afternoon going, everybody? We want to hear from you in the comments. Tell us what you're up to this week. It is a humongous week over here at Next Gen HQ, prepping for the start of Q4. So anybody out there rolling out new OKRs, new new goals for the three months ahead, tell us what's going on. We want to hear from you. Thanks for being here with us today. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Look, so we got to know we had a lot of people going to be in the comments today. We got Next Gen HQ team and fam are coming in. Andrew, what's up? All the way from LA. We really appreciate you being here. Grandma Rose, my grandmother is on. She's on every Thursday. You know this grandma rose would not miss it she has an honest tea in her hand right now drinking this honest tea just to getting ready for this show so i am absolutely fired up Dylan, any special shout outs you got to give today oh of course i gotta say grandma rose has the honest tea mama gambardella has the beyond meat burger ready to go ready to go so ready to go you gotta forget popcorn popcorn was so 2019 2020 it's the beyond meat the honest tea we're going to talk more about our guests in a second but justin we got a, a special thank you to give out who are we thanking today uh, it's a financial services company. They happen to be one of the biggest in the world. They happen to be doing everything they can to support entrepreneurs. And they happen to be named American Express, our sponsor for this show. Dylan, what is Amex currently doing for entrepreneurs? So Amex knows that entrepreneurs are out here. We are building the lives of our dreams. And sometimes you need a little bit of help to do so. You need the education, you need the community, the mentorship, like our guest coming up has been to us. And so they're putting on Summit for Success. This is going to go down October 20th, completely free. Any Next Geners out there, you just got to hit the link in the comments. We got you covered. And if you sign up, you also might win 500 bucks, courtesy of your friends at Next Gen and Amex. So if you are looking to meet Shaquille O'Neal, Venus Williams, can't promise you're going to meet them, but you can oh, hear from them live <laughs> October 20th. You can definitely meet Justin and Dylan. Uh, that's how we roll. So shout out to Amex. Thank you for making all this possible, standing for entrepreneurs. You know, Amex, we really appreciate you supporting this program. We have folks from the Philippines and India. Noel, what's up, my man? Wow. And the US. We're already global, this show. So it's going to be an incredible show. Dylan, the audience is dying to hear from Seth. So can you tell us a little bit about him? We can bring this guy on already. We've got like nine continents tuning in for this show. This is one of the most anticipated shows of all time. Seth Goldwyn, everybody. You know the name. You've heard him on many a show. You've eating this product. You've drank his drinks. Uh, he, he has no need for introduction, but I'll give it to you anyways, because he's done so much. We got to hit you in the comments. So he's the founder and co-founder of Honest Tea, excuse me, co-founder of Honest Tea. He's the founder of a new platform called Eat the Change, where he's working to inform and empower consumers to make the dietary choices that align with their goals in the climate and overall health. I'm a plant-based eater. We got some vegans on the Next Gen team, so I am pumped to welcome to the stage Seth Goldman, everybody. Let's get Seth on here. Hey, guys. How you doing? Seth, how are you doing this Thursday <laughs> afternoon? Thank you so I'm much great. for being here. It's always great to be with you guys. I love the energy. We really appreciate that, Seth. Look, Dylan and I are fanboys. We're not gonna, we're not, we got to be transparent about it. Get we're huge fans of yours. Seth joined us in 2019 for our Next Gen Summit in New York. Absolutely blew the house away. It was incredible. One of the reasons why Seth inspires Dylan and I so much is, Seth, you are a, um, an authentic leader. You I was business and you had a commitment you. to social responsibility and the first business plan can you take us back to you as a child growing up college where did this need to connect socially connect mm. with culture connect with people first get started for you because that's been a theme throughout all of your businesses yeah um well you know my parents were professors uh, my dad studied the soviet union or you know what became russia my mom studied china and so we always had this global view at our house and i had two sisters and a brother who kept reinforcing it and so the dinner con i grew up outside of boston the dinner conversation wasn't the red Sox or the weather uh it was about what's the world what happens in the world and what you do matters and how can you find meaning in it and and uh it's funny that um you know i have my wife and i have three sons and uh i've got three uh, they're all out going at it in different ways but they they bring that same mindfulness so we you know we still we do talk about the red Sox and and, and uh patriots a little more but there's also this expectation that, you know, don't let a day go by not acting on the things you care about. That's incredible, Seth. Uh, I'm not going to give you any uh, hardship over here. I'm in New York. Justin's in New York. Big Yankees fan. Yeah. We've got a playoff game Today, tonight. There's so. nothing to talk about this year. <laughs> uh, yeah, Red Sox, I'm sorry. You guys are uh, in the go. golf course. There so enjoy go. that. Enjoy the rest. <laughs> 
Um, Seth, going from that mindset, growing up in a household, and again, we shouted out mom and dad over here no, in the, I love in the Grandma intro. Rose. I'm joining Amen. Me. Amen. That's what it's about. <laughs> How does that start to manifest for you? Right? You have these yeah. incredible values that mom and dad and your family have instilled yeah. from day one. But what's the first piece that you're yeah. out there trying to make a difference? But you know, it, for me, it started in, well, you know, in school, in high school, I did, um, I was doing, you know, whether it's a uh, debate club or student government in college, the activities I took on. And you know what I realized, and I'm sure a lot of your um, guests will identify with this, that your behaviors in college really can be models for what you do. So in college, I did, uh, I ran track, I was in an acapella singing group, I did student government. Which, and not to mention, I you know I took on studies as well. I, I had, <laughs> I had some, took some classes as well. And I and on the one hand, you said, boy, that's a lot. But you know what? That's the perfect training to be an entrepreneur. Because when you're an entrepreneur, you got to take care of finance in one conversation, then go to marketing, and then go to HR, um, and find. So it's all that's kind of those behaviors and 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 acting with intention. And and frankly, the way you treat your friends too is is a. Uh, laying a, a path for how you'll act. So I think it's easy for people to say, oh, you know, when I get into my career, then I'll act a certain way. It's like, no, it doesn't really work like that. The way you're acting now is laying the groundwork for, it. You're, you're creating your brand now, you know? Even if you're still, maybe you're just out of school, but you've created a brand. And, uh, you know, you can't you change the name. Maybe you can tweak the name of your brand. Maybe you can change your haircut, but, you, the, the how you live is the brand you're building and and uh, people interpret it that way and you send signals about what will you do what won't you do you know how how much you're going to stand up for principle and one of the early lessons I had with coca-cola you know honest tea sold to coca-cola in 2011 but we started working with them in 2008 and there was a time in 2009 when they started to try to make us change some it wasn't changing the ingredients. It was just the way we communicated about it on the label. And I just said, no. And then they said, well, okay, we're going to have to have, you're going to have to talk to some senior VP about it. I said, I'll talk to him. And I did. I said, no. And then I then said, well, you're going to have to go talk to the president of Coca-Cola North America. I said, stop, let's have that conversation. And I once again said, no. And after that, I, I had created a brand that said, he's going to stand up for what he believes in. And we didn't have that conversation ever again. And by the way, they were a great partner. I don't want to make it sound like, you know, um, there was pressure to, to compromise, but you, you, how you act and the decisions you make and the way you treat people are all signals you're, di you're sending about what kind of brand and what kind of person you are. And, and people receive that. So, so this audience is by no means too young to be thinking about that. And Seth, the intentionality that you're talking about approaching uh, your entire life, uh, we say at Next Gen HQ, to be an entrepreneur is to be the CEO of your own life. It's not just about your business. It's about that holistic approach of how you carry yourself. Um, so it yeah. sounds like every activity you were touching, you were trying to think about how can I bring my values to this? How can I think about what I want to do? Did you feel pressure to start a business, a desire from right away to start it? Or was it more of a, I was exploring all these different passions? No, you know, if anything, the pressure is <clears throat> to go the conventional route, right? Like you're, you know, look, everybody needs to make a living. And so, if you're in college and you're, you're in business school and opportunities come your way, it's it's tempting to say, all right, you know, some fancy firm or a high salary, yeah, that, why not? But but um, so that's kind of where the pressure is. But to me, um, I had that internal voice saying, I got to do something. I'm going to be believe in and I'm going to be feel good about every day. Now that's not to say every day of honesty or beyond meat or eat the change is, is a joy, you know, <laughs> but it's never the case where I come home feeling like I just sold myself out. I just did work that undermines what I stand for. I never felt that. And that's to me, you know, that's the, that's the, the, the most sort of <laughs> soul scarring work. So that is so powerful. And Justin and I, we, we're trying to keep that energy ourselves, right? Not yeah, only nine sure. to five, but five to nine, right? It's, yeah. it's the holistic approach again, going right back to that. I want to hone in on that moment for you, Seth, when it was time, right? I believe you're 32 yeah. years old. Maybe you're at finishing your Yale MBA, right? You got a professor out here. There's a rumor about that or so. Yeah. What was the moment when you knew not only it's the time for me, but yeah. also this is the thing that I'm going to take my stab with? That was the key point. So 
So yeah, I had at business school, we talked about this idea, my co-founder Barry Nailbuff and I, who was my professor, we talked about this idea of a less sweet drink, but we didn't really do anything about it. I would, you know, like a lot of your, your, your group here, I had to find a job. So <laughs> I took a job working for the, uh, a place called Calvert, which does socially responsible investing. It was a good job, a good company, really uh, fan, you know, uh, HR friendly, positive workplace. And I was doing work I believed in. It was helping investors invest in companies, you know, screening out tobacco or companies with bad environmental records. So that all felt good. But it did. It was a corporate job, and I, I kept seeing uh, we would make investments in entrepreneurs who were had social purpose and, and environmental purpose to their work. And I thought that's I'd love to find a way to get into that. I just had to find the right idea. And so then it was okay. Where's the right idea? And I was, you know, I, I did some searching. I did a lot of talking to people and. I had an idea for a, uh, a nonprofit that helps public schools raise money. I talked, uh, I had won a business plan competition at, at Yale School of Management for a, a diagnostic for urinary tract infections. And we had some ideas of how to commercialize that. But none of those things spoke to me the way that, you know, eventually Honest Tea did. And what happened there, I, I was, I had given a presentation in New York to a bunch of institutional investors. And after that presentation, I went for a run in Central Park. And after the run, I was thirsty and I went to a beverage cooler and I said, man, there's nothing here. And, and my, my friend who was with me said, what do you mean? There's hundreds of options, which of course there are. I said, yeah, but they're all the same. They don't, there's no variation in sugar or taste. They all have the same main ingredient, which is high fructose corn syrup. And then I reached back out to Barry and I said, okay, I think I am ready to do something about this. And Barry had just come back from India where he'd been studying the tea industry. So he had come up with the name Honest Tea. And that kind of blew my mind, like, oh, wow, well, that's a, that's a name, that's a brand I could get excited about. And as much as I had zero experience in the beverage industry, I had always been that guy who like, tried to mix the juice and the seltzer or the different types of juices, just looking for sort of the perfect drink. So, and of course, I, because I ran track, I was always drinking a lot of liquids. And so I just, it felt like, yeah, I, I, can, I can see how this could come together. And and uh, I did, <laughs> sort of got enough of an um, idea together and a brand together that I uh, decided to leave my job at Calvert and you know, launched the business out of my home in 1998 and uh, got, uh, managed to get an appointment with a Whole Foods uh, buyer down in uh, Rockville, Maryland, not far from where I live, and brought in five thermoses of tea and got an empty Snapple bottle. We pasted a label on and said, hey, I want to sell this in your store. And, you know, to their credit, he said, well, we'll give it a try and put it in 17 stores, which was all they had here in the mid-Atlantic at the time. And that was how we got started. And, uh, you know, a lot of pain points along the way, but that was the leap I made and, and uh, never regretted it. So that's just the most incredible story. We, we, Dylan and I got to hear a little bit about it in 2019, but it's so inspiring. Just imagine you really in the time of thinking about where do I want to go? Who do I want to be? What are these yeah. ideas? And the key thing is I think you're listening. You're putting your ear to your, your own spirit and your ear to the market and thinking, what actually speaks to me? We have a lot in the comments that are really resonating. Dan, who's uh, who joined our team, is I think a great example of somebody who's thinking about, all right, well, I want to start this company. I have a lot of ideas. And Dan's question is, all right, well, how do I balance the social mission? I know I want to do yeah. something impactful, but you decided at the very beginning, you had nonprofit ideas. I want to go the for-profit path. You yeah. said you love honest name in the brand. You talk to us about, you have a lot of factors you're balancing when you're starting honesty. How did you think about, we've got social mission over here, tea company yeah. over here. I want it to be a for-profit. What's going through your mind? So that's a really great question. And, and, and you can go to the Honest Tea website and it's still up there. We have our original business plan, which we wow. wrote in 1998. And in that original business plan, we have a statement of social purpose, statement of our commitment to social responsibility. Because of course, then we didn't know exactly what form it would take, but we did say, this is a path we are committed to. And, and so, you know, what it initially meant was a less sweet drink, just lower calories, better health. And then, then we started, we had some organic ingredients, but we continued to uh, add more until the whole line was certified organic. And we were the first certified organic bottled tea. And then we had this commitment to supporting economic communities that lack access to economic opportunity. And that um, initially started with some investments in these communities, and then it evolved to become fair trade certification. And we were the first bottled tea to be fair trade certified. And what I'm proud about, especially proud about, is all of those factors are still true of honesty today. Now, I, you know, I said sold the company and I last year at, at the end of 2019 uh, uh, you know, uh, left. So I'm no longer part of honesty, but the brand still 
embraces those values and still stands for those things. And that's, that's neat. And the other thing I should add, because you mentioned I had a lot of nonprofit um, sort of mindset. Well, for the first 10 years, Honesty was a nonprofit. Now, not by design, <laughs> but we didn't make any money. And so that was, it was important because, uh, look, you know, you, you obviously, you're trying to make money to, to make the business survive. You're trying to make money. But um, because the, pro, the nonprofit values were so important, I, of course, I, it was, you know, challenging emotionally to, to keep a business afloat without money in the bank. But it also meant I was committed to the ideal. I wasn't in it for the money in the beginning, right? I was committed to the ideals and I never resented that we weren't making money. I just knew the course. And of course, over time as the business scaled, it started to make money. And, and obviously with the sale of Coca-Cola, it, it, we provided a nice return to all of our shareholders as well. That's incredible, Seth. Anybody who's listening and anybody who's read your story before, they know that you are an absolute force, right? And, and you're such a humble guy hearing you tell the story. But Seth, one question that screams to me, even just listening now, and Christina, Rachel, Malachi in the comments, do you think Honest Tea in 2020 could have happened that way? Do you think I could show up at Whole Foods with five thermoses of homebrew tea and someone would drink them? <laughs> it's a good question, you know. Um, right, it's harder to get the meetings. Uh, and, you know, we're doing this now. We're launching this new brand that I, I recognize I've, you know, I've got a track record now where I do get my calls returned from buyers. So, <laughs> so you know, I think the hardest part of launching a business now is, is yeah, it would be hard to get the financing, but, but it will be hard to get people in the store to try it, right? So, so in 1998, I literally gave out more samples of tea than I sold. You know, I, was just, I had, to get, had to get people to taste it in order to get them to come on board. And uh, so that was the marketing then, and it is harder now. And uh, but here's what I'll say: I am a huge believer that this moment we are all living through is a is a moment of change, and and people are are welcoming new ideas, new products, new foods that speak to them. And so um, obviously we're taking the, the Eat the Change is both a nonprofit platform where we make grants, but we're also launching a brand called Eat the Change, and and the brand itself is a call to action. We want people to eat food that is uh, planet friendly. And so we're launching a line of products. It's really gonna be early next year where we, um, these are products that are organic, but they're also stressing biodiversity and uh, planet friendly, obviously, you know, non-animal based snacks and foods. And so we think people will be really receptive. The logo you can see behind me is we just sort of officially introduced that. Uh, and I do think people will be receptive to that, but the marketing's different. The chat, you know, so, so we're gonna rely a lot more on social media than we will on the standard sampling. So yes, I do think it's possible, but but what the what the marketplace doesn't have room for is a me too product, right? There's no space. If you've got a product that's similar to what else is out there, you, you're not gonna be able to edge your way in. The buyers, the shelf space is limited, the market's gotten you know more competitive, financing is challenging. So it it really does have to be new, unique and 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 disruptively different. And I'd say better. A lot of business challenges Seth is talking about are remaining or are different in this landscape. A business challenge that Dylan and I know that will continue to remain is recruiting, getting that initial mm. group of people to believe. Kyle and Sophie, I see you in the comments over here. These are two entrepreneurs in the community who are building communities, building networks for others. At Next Gen HQ, we say always be recruiting, even if we're not hiring, we're always recruiting. So yeah. now you now you have a track record. I'm sure you know you, you say we want to launch a new product. You have a lot of people from your career who are saying, please count me in. you talk to like a next gen HQ though. You getting started your first early years. How did you you're a crazy guy out here thinking <laughs> I have this idea, this tea company, yeah. no experience. You're this crazy guy. How do you get that early group yeah. of people to surround you as you're building that team? Yeah, you know, so a CEO has really three key roles. And the first is to make create a vision and to and to communicate a vision of how things can be different, right? To to do it in a way that gets people excited, whether it's employees, buyers, investors. So that's the first task. Um, and then the second one is you got to find the right people and attract them. And and that's the second task. And then the third is you got to give those people put them in the right positions and give them the resources to, 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 to shine and, and execute. But the, it starts with that vision. You've got to have a vision, uh, not just of here's how we're going to make a bunch of money. It's here's how we are going to transform what is happening now 
into what is going to be the case tomorrow. And so obviously with Honest Tea, it was about a, both a less sweet drink, but a different approach to uh, agriculture with organics, and frankly, a different approach to business and the consumer, how we communicate with them. And at Beyond Meat, it was a transformation of plant protein from being those veggie burgers in the freezer case to taking space in the meat case, you know, and, and getting on the menus of mainstream restaurants where the plant protein isn't the niche, it's, it's right there in the mainstream. Um, so that it all really has to start with that vision. And, and then, um, you know, can it be layered? Can you keep digging deeper on that vision? So for, for Eat the Change, you know, we talk about, okay, we say planet friendly, but what does that mean or planet based? So it starts with organic, but then it says, okay, yes, yeah, so it's organic and it's plant-based because they have plants have so much lighter environmental footprint, but how do we take it a layer deeper? And so one of the key pillars for our planet we need is biodiversity. How do you incorporate that into a product? Well, we found out as we were doing, getting this business up, at, up <clears throat> to scale, that there are six crops that are responsible for 57% of all agricultural output. So that's like, you know, it's soy, wheat, corn, rice, sugar, potatoes. Um, and what, when you get that dependent on only six crops, you, you're really at peril because all you need is a climate shock. One of those crops goes, your whole you know, agricultural system could be uh, shaken, but you're also, your planet's much less resilient because let's say it's a disease of a particular crop. So we said, well, if we want to really support biodiversity, let's rule out all six of those crops. Let's not use them in any of our product. And then that sort of gives us a whole different <laughs> kind of palette to work with. Um, so, you know, being deliberate about every aspect and that helps communicate what we stand for, what we will do differently. And, and, I, and then I don't want to say it's easy to attract people, but you, you want people who, who can buy into that vision. You don't want people who are just in it for the money because there's no guarantee it's going to work. You want people to say, I want to, I want to, <laughs> I want to be part of that change that you're about. I love this, Seth. So many in the comments, Malachi, resonating with the power behind thinking big, thinking bold. And that's a lot of what our next-gen entrepreneurs want to be doing. They're not satisfied with the status quo. They don't want to even own, let's say, a small business. They all have aspirations for yep. what could be a humongous change. Wrong with that. Nothing wrong we're, with that. we're talking right here, Seth, about changing the world, right? If you can yep. lead with Eat the Change and Beyond Meat and Honest teeth, these have insane consequences for the better, for everybody, for the planet. Well, uh, yeah. And then the other ripple is if you do it right, you're really redefining capitalism too, right? I mean, if, if mm. people see these approaches to business work, then someone in the energy sector gets excited and says, okay, that's what I want to do in energy. And someone else says in transportation, hey, I've got to find a way to bring that. So, so right. you know, there's a lot of ripples that can come if we do it right. That movement inspires momentum, we love to yeah. say over here. Uh, Seth, talk okay. to our young entrepreneurs, our young founders who are thinking big. Maybe they're not thinking about changing the entirety of agriculture just yet. They're just coming yet. Through, <laughs> just yet. This. How do you take that vision and then start day one? Like, what, it what starts, do you do, right? Yeah, it does start with a single thing. So look, I have this bold vision for Eat the Change, but we've got we've to develop a first product line and it has to be excellent. So we've already got, you know, our third, fourth, and fifth product lines ideas. I'm like, those are great, but guys, if this first product line doesn't work, we don't get to do any of those. So let's double down, let's get this right. Let's make sure the recipe is perfect and delicious. Let's uh, make sure our sourcing relationship is tight. Let's make sure that our partners, that we're dealing with a family farm in Pennsylvania, let's make sure they're on board and they understand where we wanna go. And then, you know, let's also make sure the margins of the business make sense. They don't have to make sense on day one, but let's make sure we have a path to get there. So, so sometimes people get too excited with the shiny new toy and keep, you know, I want to do my next innovation. It's like, you don't, you don't get to do that until you succeed with your first. Like, uh, and, and look, the first may be flawed and maybe you have to pivot, but um, you don't automatically have the right <laughs> to change the world until you sort of get your proof points. So get those first proof points, you know, even if it's a small, maybe you're just sampling in a group and, and every time you sh um, share your product against someone else, people love yours the most. And then maybe you go to a farmer's market and, and you're able to sell your product and, and you get, you're the one with the line, you know, that takes over the farmer's market. And then maybe you get a small chain of stores you get to go to and, and they become launch partners with you and the, the people in the store are wearing the shirts and the people at the, on their subscription list, you know, are told about your product and get to really embrace it and use that scale to get to the next one. But, but um, don't take over the world before you take over your block. 
Love that line. I love that line. And there, I mean, we are all excited about you know this long-term vision, but it's all right. Let's be excited about that. And how do we execute? And our, a lot of a lot of the folks on our sales team are here, and I think they're a lot of they're laughing in the comments because we have so many ideas every day. We're like so many ideas, so many ideas. We're like, all right, well, what number one product line can we deliver? And in our sales team meeting this morning, our sales team was dying to talk to you about your personal diet as well. Because well, you're yeah. clearly a guy with a lot of energy. We have a lot of energy. Uh, Andrew from LA is saying right now, you know, as someone who used to have animal protein with every meal, how do you think about even making that lifestyle change? I, I got to say for Beyond Me, one of the greatest things is, as you talked about, being right on the menu. So not having to say, hey, I'm going to this weird, I'm going to this weird store over here. Like you'd be at a mainstream yeah. restaurant. Can you talk, talk to us about your journey and how you're thinking about eating for energy, for planet, sure. for your yeah. routine? It's such an exciting time. So first, let me just connect on the, the issue of energy because that, that's critical. People will tell you, I think mistakenly, that your most valuable resource is time. I actually think your most valuable resource is energy, right? Because um, what's most important, what's defining for your organization is, is, is the mindset you walk into an office with or, or to a, a Zoom call with. What are you, what are you, what's your, how are you feeling? And people riff off that, you know, your employees can sense, oh man, he's really tense or he's really tired or he's depressed. Like, so you've got to protect your energy more than anything. So for me, uh, I learned early on, um, I, if I have a choice between sleeping or exercising, you know, if it's like, let's say I'm going to get, I got a shot at either, you know, six hours of sleep or five hours of sleep and a run. I, I always do the exercise uh, because I, I need to get that, uh, first of all, I need to get, whether it's tension or issues, I need to work those out and, and the run or the swim or the biking or whatever it is for me is the best way to do that. Uh, in terms of my diet, I was a uh, just a regular uh, food eater really through, um, let's see, through, basically through 2003, 2004. And the change happened when my son, I have three sons, as I said, my oldest son at the age of 10 became a vegetarian. He was just questioning things and and then he at kept 10. at 10. Yeah. And he convinced his two other brothers to be vegetarian. And by the time he got to be 13, he convinced my wife and I to be vegetarian as well. We said, we'll give it a try. Like it's hard. This kid's in middle school. He's, he's, he's not getting into fights cause he's a tough kid, but he's getting in lots of arguments with his classmates about it. And he feels passionately we should support him. And then um, we were happy vegetarians for the next 10, 12 years. Um, and then, uh, but I would say somewhat happy that we got happier when Beyond Meat started making products that we could eat. It definitely made it much easier to have delicious food. And then just at the beginning of this year, uh, my middle son watched that movie Game Changers, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen. He said, I got to try vegan. And so we went vegan in January and, and actually have felt better, um, more energy, you know, quicker recovery. Um, I'm, I'm actually running and swimming some of my fastest times that I've you know, done in 10 years. So, um, so it work, it's working for us. Um, and, and uh, you know, I think it's also a, it's a bit of a different mindset to go all the way to vegan because it is something now you, you definitely, I don't say you limit your choices, but you definitely focus your choices. And, uh, and it does make you feel, but it does make you think, okay, I'm, I am acting and fully aligned with what, you know, what I might care about. And obviously for us launching this brand, it totally makes sense. And I should also mention, you know, we've got a restaurant chain that we've launched called Plant Burger, which is also a, a basically a vegan fast food chain. And it's a lot of fun and uh, also makes it much easier to enjoy great tasting plant-based food. Seth, this is incredible. We're going to get all those links to everything Seth mentioned <laughs> okay, in the comments good. here. Yeah. Uh, Seth, I got to say, personally, for a second, in February, I also began a vegan journey, plant-based oh, journey, yeah. more holistically, some yeah. fish in there. Yeah. Uh, but it is so instrumental in my energy now. I could not right. imagine yeah. going back, right? And, yeah. and only a year ago, I would have said, vegan, Dylan, no way. Yeah. And then I try it, right? and you get out there. And that's thanks to people like you making it, as Justin said, more of the norm. I'm not yeah. the weirdo. I'm, I'm pretty weird in other ways, but <laughs> I'm more normal, at least with my eating habits today. That's great, so, Dylan. Yeah. Thank and you. I love that. Thank and, you. And, and just to share with you, you know, our vision or my vision is not that the world is going to become vegan. I, I don't see that happening. But if we get everyone to have one or two more plant-based meals per week, that's transformational in terms of people's diets, in terms of our impact on the planet, in terms of climate change. So that's how, that's how we get to a more sustainable uh, planet. 
I know my dad's watching, so I'll shout him out here. We are on Meatless Mondays in the Gambardella household. Awesome. I was back okay. home for the quarantine, and we uh, would put the fake meat instead of you know the burger or whatever. It yeah, is. small. Now changes. don't call it fake. Don't call it fake. So what I we like said, but Beyond Meat, it's plant-based meat because you know what meat really is is just a construction of amino acids that form the proteins, lipids that form the fats, and you know water and some trace minerals and carbohydrates. If you reconstruct all of those things using plants, it's meat. It's not meat from an animal, uh, but we say it is plant-based meat. I love that. That's critical. That is, I'm taking that with me. Seth, yeah, I totally. got to ask about your mindful practice. So someone who is now in three organizations, right? Yes. Very much so involved in building from the ground up. You, until last year, were also involved in ST, the chairman of Beyond Meat. A lot How going you on. Focusing yourself? A lot going on. Yeah, just, just a tad. How do you bring presence to each conversation when you're yeah. going beyond me and then getting off this Zoom and going to yeah. uh, Honest Tea back in the day. You know, one of the things that was really good for me, and I, I, it wasn't, I, didn't, I don't want to say I had a strategy, but I was a very late adopter of a cell phone. You know, I have one now. But what it meant was when my kids were growing up, I wasn't one of those dads scrolling through email at the baseball game or the soccer field. Like, I was present. And um, I... I, what I work, I work, you know, and I, I, I mean, I'm at the office and I, um, I'm here, I'm locked in. Um, but I also leave the office, you know, I'm, I'm out of here by five 15, uh, every day. And then when I'm home, I'm, I'm present now after dinner, I may get back on. But, um, I think, you know, multitasking, which I've said is a critical piece for being an entrepreneur. It doesn't mean doing everything all at the same time. It means doing something really well, and then shifting and doing something else really well. Um, and, and focusing on what you're doing uh, and being present for what you're doing. But I think that's just a matter of sort of having a little bit sharper lines between what you do. Um, and so for me, that's how I've been able to, 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 to make it work. And, and then of course, the other piece is surround yourself with great people. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm so fortunate, well, I mean, not just in my family, uh, I've got people who, who provide incredible support, love, and loyalty, and, and just make me a, a feel a sense of balance. But in, in the companies I'm with as well, great partners, great, a great team of people. So I don't, uh, I mean, I don't have, I don't shy from taking on a task, but I've got people who step up and, and uh, you know, I, the best thing is when I know something needs to be done and I come in the morning and someone's already handled it, you know? And, I mean, there's no more feeling that gets you jazzed up. It's in your team firing about That's the vision that you're all working on together. We have a lot of young people in this live right now. Emmanuel, great entrepreneur, Francisca. Uh, Emma has turned 20 on Sunday, I see in the hey. comments over here. We have a <laughs> lot of young entrepreneurs who want to tackle a lot themselves. What are some of the, you know, you talked about you have 515, you're getting off. You have a team around you. You said you're involved in so many things. Productivity, when you're thinking about your to-do list, do you have any quick tips on how you manage your routine? Are you walking in, here are the five things I got to do? Or are you walking in and you have meetings left and right? You're <laughs> very intentional about your time, about your energy placement. How yeah. are you structuring your, your productivity flow, getting stuff done? Yeah, so a few things about my routine. So number one, first thing you do get in the morning is you get up and you make the bed. Like um, my wife and I do that together. It's, it's easier to do, but... Make sure that whatever happens at the end of the day, we've got a, a good, nice place to <laughs> lie down. Uh, the next thing for me is um, quickly catch up on an email, but then um, sort of clear the decks there and then get, get uh, an hour of exercise in, whatever, whatever it is. Um, and then I'm in the office and yeah, you know, just moving from task to task. I, I mean, there's, um, we, we do, especially now, especially during the pandemic, a lot more check-ins than we would because the office is, is, I mean, I, I come into the office, but it's not everyone's here. And so we've got to keep people, you know, the communication, I, going back to what I said earlier, of course, communicating a vision is the, is the leader's most important job, but also just keeping communication flowing is, 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 is an ongoing task. And it has to happen almost every day. Uh, I'm, I am one and people joke about this. I don't like meetings. So I don't, uh, there's not long meetings. And so we'll have a, we have a check-in and if everyone said their piece and it took, you know, 18 minutes, we're good. We don't need to sit for that half hour. All right, we're good. Let's go to work. Like don't, um, don't make work for people. Don't have meetings. If you could do it in, you know, in, in an email or, or just a, a quick conversation. So we try to be pretty surgical. 
Um, the one thing we've done that I think was good, and I, I didn't come up with this. Once again, I said it's great when your team comes up with something. We were doing these check-ins, and they were good. But our office manager said, you know, with everybody not being connected, I think it would be nice if on one of the meetings, so Monday morning, we just got the chance to do a little more in getting to know each other because, we're you know, it's still a new new enterprise. So what we do is on Friday, we assign a question for everybody to think of over the weekend, you know. Um, and then on Monday, everyone just shares. So the, the question for uh, this past Monday was, what was your favorite uh, snack food growing up as a kid? And the one for this coming Monday is, what is a part of nature you've come to appreciate during the pandemic that you might not have appreciated before? And people just share that. It's because it's the kind of talk that would normally happen at a water cooler or maybe over lunch, and, and we're not getting those interactions. So just making sure people still have that chance to connect and interact with each other. That's incredible, Seth. Uh, I'll give a quick shout out to our director of community, Rachel, who is leading engaging in, in the culture building way conversations. We call them coffee chats, coffee yeah. by RLG. That's the, uh, the yeah. joke too. I have a bias we towards the tea. I, tea <laughs> Everyone talks about coffee, but yeah, we can call it a tea talk as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're next biased. week, next week, Rachel, uh, tea with Rachel. So yeah. TVD, we'll let you know, Seth. But we are already crazy coming to the end of our time with you. I would be so angry if I didn't ask you, Seth, what is firing you up right now about the next generation of founders? Obviously, mm. you are building a new business right now, but yeah. you spend a lot of time getting to meet young entrepreneurs, the, the Seth of, of a few years ago, who are thinking big like you. Yeah. What is something yeah. that you're thinking about that gets you out of bed in the morning? Well, one of the things I love is that, um, you know, when I started Honest Tea 22 years ago, it was a job to educate people about the environment. Like, hey, this thing, you know, we got to be worried about this. Like everybody in your generation gets the memo. They, 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 they feel that urgency and they live that urgency. And I love that. I like, and then the other thing that's happening that's really powerful and important is people understand what a, a structural racism is. You know, we don't have to start giving a lecture. People get that and people are ready to act on it. Um, so I just feel like um, our, our consciousness is so much more advanced now as a starting point and there's people i'm confident who are you know way beyond where my thinking is in terms of where we need to go and in fact my son um the one who, he's, he's heading up the marketing the one who convinced me to become a vegetarian is uh heading up the marketing at plant burger and he's just got these wonderfully creative ideas uh and 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 <clears throat> so like i love uh, you know he, he brings them to me he was the one who came up with the phrase eat the change um, he, it was based on the Gandhi phrase, be the change you wish to see in the world. He's like, eat the change you wish to see in the world. And, and I'm like, exactly. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so, so I, I really, uh, love that, um, today's entrepreneurs, your generation of entrepreneurs is starting from a, a platform that's, um, so much further along than, than where I was. And, and I can't wait to see the impact they have. And so we can't wait to see the impact Beautiful. that your organizations are continuing to have. So before we wrap up, tell us, you know, what are we have Eat the Change, you have ETC yeah. Impact. Where should we send our entrepreneurs? We're like, I want to find out more. I want yeah. to try, you know, what, right when the restaurants come into market, give us an yeah. overview of where we can go. Good. Okay. So eatthechange.com is, I'll say that's our holding website. Um, we have a presence, you know, on Twitter, we've shown, we've launched our, our new brand. Um, yeah, and which you can, as I see behind me, but we'll have products that start hitting the market at the end of, no, well, beginning of December and then really hit in earnest starting in, in January is when we're going to officially launch. Uh, if any of your um, uh, team or, or, or community is in the mid-Atlantic area, uh, we have uh, six plant burger restaurants based in uh, as far north as Wynwood, Pennsylvania, and as far south as Tyson's, Virginia, uh, all located inside of Whole Foods, who's been a great partner for us. And then the eatthechange.org, which is a website we have, is that we list all of the folks who received uh, our grants. We gave out about $330,000 of grants to over 25 nonprofits uh, earlier this year. And these are all nonprofits focused on helping transform people's diets, a community-based uh, transform diets to become more planet-friendly and, and amazing or inspiring organizations doing that work. And, and we're proud to be partners with them. Seth, this is incredible. incredible. We've got December on the calendar. Justin and I are about to hit a road trip to Pennsylvania to get to one of those restaurants. <laughs> oh, it's worth the trip. I'd love to hear what you think. Yeah. You are the best, Seth. Always such a pleasure to pick your brain, to learn from you. Thank you for making the Thanks, time guys. to join us on Live Adventure HQ. Take care. Take care, Good Seth. Good luck, Seth.
Incredible, oh, man. That was incredible. So, like so many takeaways. Every minute, I'm like, honestly, I wish I had my notebook. Going. Me too, me too. One of the biggest takeaways is I, I love when Seth was talking about time is not your most precious resource. Energy. It's, I mean, look, we're energy guys. We're freaking, we're massive energy guys. We try. And, and it's absolutely so, so true. And I think it's very connecting with keeping meetings short, very connecting with the exercise. Like, so it's all very, very obviously very connected. Seth is one of those people that we can all look up to who focuses on first thing in the morning, he said, is making his bed, but he's getting his exercise too, right? He's working on him. He's the CEO. He is someone who is out there doing it all, but he starts his day by saying, if I'm not the best Seth, how can I expect anyone else to be their best director of marketing, right? Community? It doesn't matter. It starts and ends with the head. And that's so impactful for anybody starting a business. The story is incredible. His story is incredible. Francisco, Stories. Emmanuel, Aaron, the story. Like these stories are so relatable. They're so freaking Crazy. relatable, man. Unbelievable. Absolutely loved that conversation. I'm. I just want to hang out with that guy. Like literally, I just want to. I wish he would. I wish he would come back. To the <laughs> because I, the, I would the drive back to Pennsylvania. Hang with him. Yeah, yeah he's really committed us to a road trip, man. But uh, I mean, that was dope. Seth is the man. I feel super grateful to have been a part of this. Next Gen, thank you so much for joining us on this conversation. Like, really, really appreciate it. And appreciate all of you guys out here just trying yeah. to be your best selves. Like, that's that's all we're trying to do as well. We really appreciate that. Drop us a note with the one piece that you're going to walk away, whether it's the morning making your bed or starting with the change yourself. And, and let us know in the comments. Reach out to us. But again, want to thank American Express for making this all possible. Yeah. You are uh, powering so much innovation education and we are thrilled to be partnered with you, putting this on, hosting this episode of Live with Next Gen HQ and Seth Goldman. And we can't wait. We're back next Thursday. We got Marquis Colston. Unbelievable guy. Unbelievable He's like, you know, guy. NFL, all Yeah, he's pro. in the end zone he's currently. Saying, Noel, yeah, I'm gonna back, see Jay. you there. Rachel, I'm gonna see you there. Jenna, I'm gonna see you, I'm gonna see you there. And we're going to be back next gen HQ. We are live. Dylan, Justin, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll catch you back next Thursday. Peace.